Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Ari. Mayaro people, just let's give everybody a wonderful welcome. Show them how we just make noise in Mayaro Naman. Right. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to come out here this evening in your numbers. I'm happy to see so many of you, and I do hope that you appreciate all our speakers here tonight and take the information back into your homes, your communities, and let's chase this PNM government straight into the Atlantic Ocean. Esteem, my esteemed political leader who is on her way, my parliamentary colleagues, members of NATEX, councillors, aldermen, mayors, prospective candidates, the foot soldiers of the United National Congress, my Mayaro brothers and sisters, let's give our political leader a thunderous Mayaro round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today to reflect upon the state of our beloved nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I want you all to cast your minds back to the year of 2015 when the administration under the leadership of Mrs. Kamala Pasad Bisesa relinquished national office. It is imperative that we remember and we must never forget the remarkable progress that we achieved at that time. Our crime rate had reached its lowest level in a decade thanks to the dedicated effort of our protective services. We had bolstered their resources, established the National Operations Center, Counter Human Trafficking Unit, the Rapid Response Unit, and other agencies that delivered tangible results. Inflation, brothers and sisters, was kept at 3%, the lowest in two decades, granting our people the ability to afford more, more food on your table. Domestic food production by our farmers had surged, providing gainful employment to more farmers and reducing our food importation bill. Our small and micro enterprises flourished with over 24,000 businesses creating over 200,000 jobs that contributed to 35% of our GDP. We in the United National Congress constructed and utilized more healthcare facilities than ever before, ensuring access to comprehensive healthcare for all including treatment of non-communicable diseases. Our foreign direct investment soared to unprecedented levels. With US $2.5 billion in 2012, an average of 1.5 billion US every year after that, Trinidad and Tobago became a beacon of opportunity for global and domestic investors. Our country, ladies and gentlemen, reached new heights in the ease of doing business, we attracted new and local foreign investment, thereby fostering economic growth, transformation, and development in Trinidad and Tobago. Our Children's Life Fund, which was designed and produced under Kamla Pusad Bisesa, saved the lives of 120 children. And that is something today that our children is having problems in accessing that life fund. Ladies and gentlemen, we raised the minimum wage from $9 to $12.50 per hour. We increased old age pensions, NIS benefits. We expanded the food assistance program. We provided additional services for the elderly and infirm. More households enjoyed the privilege of 24-7 pipe-borne water. And we had ambitious plans to improve water delivery. Education received unprecedented attention during our tenure. We constructed and refurbished numerous schools, distributed 70,000 laptops, established a new university campus. We revamped the curriculum, and we achieved the best ever examination results in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. We constructed thousands of homes, regularized land ownership, offered home improvement subsidies and grants, and implemented other housing initiatives. These achievements, ladies and gentlemen, culminated in the best quality of life or nation you have ever found in living memory. 
Yet today, we find ourselves confronted with a stark reality of a completely different and op op opposite nature. Allow me to paint a picture of the current situation in Trinidad and Tobago. Our national security has reached an unprecedented state of crisis, posing a threat to the safety and well-being of all our citizens. Imagine we have a Gatlin assault rifle walk out of Camp Tetron in Port of Spain, and it's some way idle in Trinidad and Tobago, and that weapon can shoot 650 rounds per minute. The cost of food has skyrocketed by 100% since 2016, placing an immense burden on our people. Fuel prices, ladies and gentlemen, have multiplied fivefold, fueling the already soaring cost, cost of food and impacting our citizens' livelihood. Pharmaceutical costs have surged, making essential medication increasingly unaffordable. Our public sector workers have been forced to accept 4% wage increase, leaving them unable to adequately provide for their families based on the level of inflation brought about by economic mismanagement by this administration. Shockingly, one in three nationals today now live below the poverty line, struggling to meet their monthly expenses. Foreign investors no longer see Trinidad and Tobago as an attractive destination. Investors are fleeing this country at a rate of $750 million annually. Local food production has declined, resulting in a staggering $6 billion annual food import bill. Small and micro enterprise sectors, which was once vibrant, is severely affected. This has led to widespread unemployment, limited career opportunities, and diminished competitiveness in the marketplace. The wealth gap has widened, with a privileged few amassing riches while the working masses grow power poor. Unemployment rates have reached their highest levels since the 1980s, and the government manipulates official figures to hide the true extent of the crisis. In the face of this dire situation, it is crucial to acknowledge that the PNM government currently operates in this fiscal year with a budget of $61.4 billion. The question, brothers and sisters, we must ask, where is the money going if it fails to improve the quality of life for citizens? Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Trinidadians and Tobagonians, the time has come for the United National Congress to reclaim national office. We are prepared, under the leadership of Kamala Prasad Bisesa, to embark on a journey that will not only restore our economy to stability, but also elevate the living standards of our people to the heights even greater than what we achieved before. When the United National Congress assumes power once more, we will hit the ground running with a laser focus on transforming Trinidad and Tobago into a modern, competitive, and technologically driven society. Our approach will be targeted and comprehensive, leaving no one behind. Ladies and gentlemen, when we go back into government, we will engage the entire society, collaborating with international institutions and experts to deliver specific, measurable results. We will urgently diversify the economy, creating growth poles in manufacturing, agriculture, food processing, medical supplies. We will make our own Southeast Coast a new growth pole for development, revitalizing the tourism sector, agriculture, and energy services at the port of Galeota. We will put all of you back to work when we return to government. We, we will prioritize industries such as furniture, furniture manufacturing, specialized chemical for the medical and energy sectors, garment manufacturing, metal foundries, aviation and marine services, among others. We will facilitate meaningful discussions with manufacturers, businesses, and labor organizations through tripartite dialogues. Together, 
we will set specific goals and work towards achieving them. We will make it a national priority to improve the ease of doing business, making Trinidad and Tobago an attractive destination once again. We will set annual targets and leverage the expertise of skilled professionals to market our nation to the international investment community. What this means, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to put Trinidad and Tobago back to work, which is the most important issue facing our people. We will focus on ICT-driven and industry-relevant training. We will prioritize our school construction, and we will utilize the unused UE campus effectively. We will prioritize skill training, leveraging national public institutions. Please stand as we welcome the political leader. You all may have your seats. Let's give our political leader Mayaro welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome, political leader, to the constituency of Mayaro. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, in continuing our plans. When we, get, when we get back into government, we will continue to prioritize skills training, leveraging national public institutions to provide training in modern and relevant fields with particular emphasis on technology. We will provide incentives to farmers to increase food production, reducing our reliance on imports. We'll improve agricultural access roads and develop the necessary infrastructure for Karini lands. We will implement various economic measures aimed at taming inflation 
to 3% or less, ensuring manageable living costs for all, especially our working poor. We will design a targeted poverty alleviation measure, lifting the most vulnerable among us out of their current condition. We will target poverty alleviation constituency by constituency, community by community, house by house, family by family. We will start the repair to the basic fabric that holds our society together, the family unit. Ladies and gentlemen, the United National Congress has a proven track record of delivering unprecedented economic growth and tangible improvements in the quality of life for all citizens. With our competent team, national vision and unwavering commitment, we will do it once again. The urgency and criticality of the current situation demands swift action to reverse the economic ruin and restore the well-being of our citizens caused by the ineptitude and failures of this PNM regime. The United National Congress will save Trinidad and Tobago, setting us on a path of growth where every individual can enjoy improved circumstances. The first hurdle you must cross, my brothers and sisters, is to turn up on the morning of the local government elections. Dip your finger into the red ink and place your X with the passion, the purpose, and with certainty next to the symbol of the rising sun. Let us send a strong message to the people national movement that we have had enough. The country is ready for change. The country is ready for a return to governance by the United National Congress. Let us reclaim our nation's prosperity, unity, and greatness. United, we will build a brighter future for all. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, one leader, one party. Let us take back Trinidad and Tobago under the leadership of Kamala Prasad Bisesa and the United National Congress. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless Trinidad and Tobago. God don't kill you, should make you stronger.